Hi, my name is Noah Eaker. I'm an editor at Random House. Thank you all for coming. I'm delighted to be able to introduce you to Mbolo Mbabue. You're going to hear from Mbolo herself about her amazing journey, and it really is an amazing journey to be here with you today. And you're going to also hear a little about the urgent, compassionate novel that she's written, Behold the Dreamers. Uh, but I'm just going to, in a few minutes, do the one thing that she's not going to do, which is brag about her. Um, and I have some people backing me up who could say it better than I ever could. About Behold the Dreamers, Christina Baker Klein, the number one New York Times bestselling author of Orphan Train, says, Dazzling, fast-paced, and exquisitely written, Behold the Dreamers is one of those rare novels that will change the way you see the world. And Bolo Mbue is a breathtaking talent. The National Book Award-winning author of Brown Girl Dreaming, Jacqueline Woodson, says of this book, who is this Mbolo Mbue, and where has she been hiding? Her writing is startlingly beautiful, thoughtful, and both timely and timeless. She's taken on everything from family to the Great Recession to immigration, while deftly reminding us what it means to truly believe in the American dream. And my favorite is our first trade review, which we've just received, a starred review from Kirkus Reviews, which says, among the spate of novels forged in the crucible of the previous decade, Mbue's impressive debut deserves a singular place. Realistic, tragic, and still remarkably kind to all of its characters, this is a special book. I couldn't agree more, and I'm excited to introduce you to Mbolo. Thank you, Noah. Good morning, everybody. And thank you, Jeffrey, for that story. What a story. <laughs> um, I'm delighted to be here today. Um, and today is actually my very first time standing in front of an audience as a writer. Um, so this is very special for me. And it means a lot to me that this very first time is in front of librarians, because library and librarians were very instrumental in getting me here today. And my journey as a writer began in a public library in Virginia many years ago. But before I get to all that, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm from Cameroon. Um, I was born in Cameroon in a small village. Um, and like many people in this village, I lived in a house without any electricity and without any running water. But it was a wonderful childhood. And when I was about eight years old, my mother sent me to live with an aunt in another town. And my aunt's house had a lot of books. And it was there that I fell in love with reading. I read a lot of Shakespeare, I, I read Dickens, I read Chinua Achebe, and mostly English and African writers. Um, and because I read a lot, I knew about public libraries. And I always imagined, wow, how amazing would it be to live in a place with a public library? Because my town didn't have a public library. Um, when I was, and then, you know, after I finished high school, I got a chance to come to America to go to college. And when I first came to America, the first place I got to live in was in Chicago. And I was miserable. It was way too cold for me. It was way too windy. <laughs> um, I just left somewhere where it was about 90 degrees every day, and I came somewhere where it was about 50 degrees. And that, um, that was a very big discrepancy for me. Um, and I was very homesick. I missed my mother. I missed my friends. I missed my family. But then I went to a public library, and I wasn't so homesick anymore when I was there. Because in a public library, surrounded by all these books, I felt very much at home. I, I, um, I learned how to use the computer. I learned how to use the internet. And I got to you know, read a lot of books. So I felt very happy having this public library. And I wasn't very adventurous. I didn't go out to explore the city, but I learned how to take a bus so that I could go to this library. I did eventually leave Chicago, and I came to New Jersey. I went to college in New Jersey. And after, um, after New Jersey, I, went, um, I got to live in Virginia. And again, I was in a place I didn't have know anybody. And I went to public library again. And it was in the public library in Virginia that I started, you know, something happened to me. Because I went to find a book, and as I walked in the library, I noticed that there was um, there was a bookshelf that had Oprah book club picks. And, but at that point, I was reading mostly African writers. I mostly read, um, I knew very little about American writers. But I liked <laughs> Oprah, and I, I, I figured <laughs> I, I probably liked the book she recommends. So I said, let me check out one of her books. 
And the first book I noticed on that shelf was Toni Morrison's Song of Solomon. And I, because I grew up reading the Bible, and there's a book in the Bible called Song of Solomon, I thought, oh, this is going to be a biblical novel, and at least some kind of love story. So I borrowed this novel, and of course, it wasn't anything like what I imagined it would be, but it was just the most wonderful novel. It was, it was just so powerful, and I, and I loved it so much that the moment I finished writing it, I started, from the moment I finished reading it, I just started writing. And I, ha I had no intentions with my writing. I just wanted to write for the joy of writing. So I started writing, and, and I eventually left Virginia. And um, after, after a couple of years, I moved to New York City to go to graduate school. So I moved to New York. And I loved New York from the beginning. I thought it was a wonderful place. But it could be very overwhelming also. So I spent a lot of time in libraries again. And the library on 136th Street in Harlem, that was where I went to a lot. I also went to the library in Morningside Heights, where I, learned, where I sent out a lot of resumes. Um, and I got a job, and I was able to get my master's from Teachers College. So after I left the Teachers College, I got a job in market research at the media company. And I was working there in the fall of 2008 when Lehman Brothers collapsed. And I remember that day because I was at work and, and I was looking, reading the news, and I'm thinking, oh boy, this is not good. This is not good at all for the economy and for me. Um, but I am, um, and of course, a year later, I lost that job. So there I was unemployed and trying to find a new job. And I had a bit of a hard time finding a new job, just like many people in the recession back then, it was hard finding a new job. And about a year after I lost my job, I hadn't found a new job yet, I went out for a walk one day. And I went for a walk around Colombo Circle, which is one of my favorite places in the city. And as I was, I, walked, I was walking um, on 58th Street, right in front of the Time Warner building, I noticed something. I noticed that there were these chauffeurs um, waiting next to black cars in front of Time Warner building. And these nice, fancy black cars. And I also noticed men in suits who look like executives coming out of Time Warner building and getting into the cars and being driven away by the chauffeurs. And I said to myself, who are these men who have people driving them around? And, and some of the chauffeurs, they look like they could be African immigrants like myself. So I started thinking about you know, what goes on in that car. You know, this American executive and this African immigrant who is his chauffeur, what is their relationship like? And in what ways did the recession affect them? Because the recession had affected my life. I didn't have a job. So I thought about their lives too. So I decided to write a story about it. I became obsessed with writing this story. But I said to myself, how am I going to do this? I, I don't have an MFA. I, I never took any kind of writing class. But I decided to write the story either way. And I, and I began writing the story. And after several drafts, I started thinking about getting it published. And so one of the novels which I loved a lot from the Oprah Book Club was Jonathan Franzen's um, The Corrections. So I thought about, when I was thinking about agents to represent me, one of the agents I wanted to represent me was Jonathan Franzen's agent. Um, <laughs> very ambitious, I know. <laughs> but why not? <laughs> so I, I sent her an email, and then another email, and then I started stalking her. <laughs> so I stalked her for almost three years, and finally she said, okay, I'll represent you. It wasn't that easy, <laughs> but um, finally she agreed to represent me. And, she, um, and I did many, many, many more rewrites of the novel, and the final, the end result is the novel called Behold the Dreamers. So what is Behold the Dreamers about? It is a story about two New York City families one family is this incredibly wealthy Upper East Side family. They live and they have a house in the Hamptons. The children go to excellent private schools. And the father is a senior executive at Lehman Brothers. And the other family is, is uh, this working class immigrant family from Cameroon. They, they're hoping to one day become American citizens. And they're trying to get an education. And then the father gets a job as a chauffeur for this Lehman Brothers executive and his family. So the novel is about the intersection of the lives of these two very different families. And it's also about the different ways in which the recession affected their lives. 
And, and in many ways, I'll say that it is a story about dreams. It is about the power of dreams, especially the power of the American dreams. It is about how the pursuit of our dreams transforms us. And it is about the sacrifices we are compelled to make to see our dreams come true. And speaking of dreams, I have to say that standing in front of you guys today is a dream come true for me. Um, I, I, and I want to thank you for the work you do, not only for people like me who come to new countries and to new cities and would be completely lost if it wasn't for public libraries, but for what you do to help people's dreams come true. Thank you. Thank you.